All right, so season two of Ghana's Strongest, the final showdown is this weekend, Sunday, 12 p.m. sharp here at TV3. So make your way to come and cheer your athletes on. Who wins? Is it going to be the defending champion, Faisal Alassan, or Sunny Mohammed, as well as Kwachi, Barack Obama, or is it going to be Huse Manode Ni Layama? Faisal Alassan, popularly known as Freaky Tar, is 26 years old and comes from Jirapa in the Upper West region. Faisal resides in Kumasi. He is 6 feet tall and carries a weight of 125 kilograms. Faisal is a bouncer by profession at the Kumasi Golden Tulip Hotel. Winner of season one of the competition, will Faisal defy all odds and retain his title? Faisal will face stiff opposition from Kwame Kwachi Barack Obama, who calls himself Man Past Man. Kwachi Barack Obama is a student of King's University College. He comes from Kumase in the Ashanti region and resides in Accra. As Man Past Man, has he got what it takes to pass all the other opponents to win Season 2 of Ghana's Strongest? The third contender will be Ebenezer Niyama Huse Mano Day, popularly referred to by most of his fans. Ebenezer Niyama is a native of Accra and resides in Odoko official town. Huse Manode is a carpenter by profession. He is 5 feet tall and carries a weight of 130 kilograms with all the physical appearance. He is going to prove to men that indeed Huse Manode has come to stay. The final contender for this season's Ghana Strongest is Sunny Mohammed, popularly referred to as Arnold the Classic. Sunny is 6 feet tall and carries a weight of 100 kilograms. Sunny Mohammed hails from the northern region and resides in Kumasi. He is also a bouncer by profession. With his showmanship and effort, has the man who has Faisal Alassan in the same gym as a mentor got what it takes to compete and give Faisal and the other two contestants a run for their money in the finals on season two of Ghana's Strongest. The finals is on Sunday, August 11 at TV3 Strongest Arena and the time is 12 p.m. sharp. Come and cheer your athlete on to victory. Who emerges Ghana's Strongest season two? Will it be Faisal Alassan, Kwame Kwachi Barack Obama, Ebenezer Niyama, or Sunny Mohammed? Ghana's strongest, the power to do. All right, the power to do. Let's come here on Sunday. I mean, all the fans of Ghana Strongest and your various athletes will be here as well. And the ones who could not make it through, they will all be here to ensure that the program is a success. Remember, security is also beefed up. So, I mean, make your way to TV3 here on Sunday and enjoy the show. It's at 12 p.m. sharp. Ghana Strongest is TV3 sports reality show. Okay, away from Ghana Strongest, let's now do something on football. And I'll be speaking this afternoon. Uh, he joins me in the studio. Uh, Abel, uh, Shanti Regional Correspondent, I'm talking of Evan Sinkum. He's mm. been running by us most of the stories from the Ashanti region, and particularly that has to do with Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Mm. Okay, before that, we have, I mean, Sunny Dara on the line, spokesperson for the Ghana Football Association. Uh, he joins us on the line to talk about the GFA president. We hear he was in Sierra Leone over the weekend to observe the FA elections that went on there. Good afternoon, Sunny, and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Joe. Uh, Sunny, how are you faring? Hello. Okay, great. Um, how true is it that uh, President Kwesi Nyantichi has apologized with the issue that has to do with the transfer of some Kotoko players? I mean, I mean the transfer of some of the Kotoko players. I, I think um, the, there was a story in the graphics post this morning mm. that uh, said that the president has regretted the statement made an accusation he made at Kotoko. Uh, absolutely not true. He has only withdrawn certain portions of the uh, the statement that came up as an attack on Kwame Barnabas' father, but the substance of the issue, the substance of his, uh, of his claim still stands. He wants to make it clear that he thought the, the concept of cooperation deal um, is detrimental to receiving clubs and also to the Ghana Football Association. So those points still stand. He only apologized on the issue of the Panama Cup 
Well, so according to him, the, the outbursts on the transfer saga were premised on the wrong information, which he regretted, rather. Uh, yes. I mean, the, only the, 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 the place that particularly said that Kwame did not have a good raising or a good upbringing was where he regretted. But that apart, all those comments he made concerning cooperation deals and clubs being left out of pocket because of uh, such cooperation deals still stand. And uh, not only clubs being left out of pocket, but the Ghana Football Association, which also benefits from uh, transfer of players, have also, will also be left out of pocket because of such deals. And he thinks that it's wrong and it's strongly stands by those comments. Okay, Sunny, away from that also, I mean, Ghana, at the August FIFA friendly, who are we facing? We hear news. How true is it that we, 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 we're lining up to take on Canada? Absolutely not true. Mm. As we speak now, there's no proposal from the Canadian Football Association or anyone representing them. Mm. What it was was somebody approached us that we'd be able to organize a match against Canada, and we said, yes, we are interested. But as we speak, there's no offer on the table. There's, there are no terms, there's no letter whatsoever. All right. Thank you very much, Sunny. Uh, Ibrahim Sani Dara. I've been speaking with Ibrahim Sani Dara on some of the issues that are churning out in the Ghana Football Association. President Kwesi Nyantichi has come out to apologize um, the, on the transfer issues. He says critically that he didn't apologize on the transfer issues, but on the statement he made on the fact that uh, Kwame Banuaku did not have a good upbringing. Um, that was cleared. And also, remember, Ghana is not lining up to face Canada. That story is also on true well let's now still deal with Kotoko Ivan Sinkum mm. we hear Otun say to the spiritual leader and the owner of Masi and Santi Kotoko is meeting them for should I say divine directions towards this season um, how is the feel how, how is the I mean feeling like in Kumasi when you speak to most of the fans well wonderful thanks so much for the question no um, Kumasi or let me say Menshia has always been tagged as the fire extinguisher Anytime there's um, issues um, mm. in the supporting base as far as um, Kumasi Asante Kotoko is concerned. So to uh, most of the supporters, it has come as a refreshing news because um, once the, um, the, the, I mean, Otun for the Asante Hene is meeting um, with the new board, definitely they are going to spell out um, in the new direction which Kotoko is going to be driven to. And that has come as a refreshing news to the supporting base, I must say. Okay. Um, and when you sample views of most of them, um, with the new or the interim, I mean, board chairman, the exit of Dr. K.K. Sapong, how do you foresee, I mean, the fortunes of Kotoko this season? I think it's positive um, because earlier, and when Dr. K.K. Sapong actually exited from the Kumasi Asante Kotoko, they were kind of um, a divided. Um, there's kind of a division within the supporting base, as I indicated earlier. So now you could see that, yes, um, they are all beginning to have a common voice, and that spirit is back. So all that they are expecting from this new board is that um, they kind of give Kotoko that direction that they all want to see, um, winning trophies, you know, I mean, Masas and Kotoko, but they always want to see, I mean, they always want to um, see their team winning trophies. So um, they're expecting something positive in the coming season let me put it that way okay and moving forward also obviously Kotoko would be going to Africa this time around um, if you've been observing them I mean with the issues that are coming out mm -hmm. with transfer of play mm -hmm. do you think tomorrow after the meeting definitely we're going to see um, a formidable front that has to do with the administration that will trickle down to the way the players are bought for Kotoko mm -hmm. this time and do you think they can perform well in Africa let me tell you something about Menshia you know Menshia always has that magic touch. Mm. No matter the kind of problems confronting um, Kotoko, anytime Menshia speaks, you see a new direction. Mm. And that is the spirit that I'm talking about here. So I'm very sure that um, after tomorrow's meeting, there's going to be, I mean, something good happening in the camp of Masia Sante Kotoko. I'm very sure. Okay. From what I've seen, I mean, earlier on. Okay, I mean, we know Kumasi don't joke with, I mean, Mensha, they don't joke with their fufu, Precisely. they don't joke with Kotoko <laughs> <laughs> as well. Um, also, the chunk of fans who are here in Accra, mm. you are based in Kumasi, you see it all. 
when they come to play certain games or when they travel to play certain games, um, we know Ghana is going to be playing Zambia in yeah, Kumasi. Yeah, yeah. How is the euphoria like before even September? I understand Zambia has been bragging, mm. but anytime I speak to some of the fans there, they say, well, probably they, they've not tasted, I mean, that spirit that exists at the Babayara Sports Stadium. Mm. So let them brag. But when they come to Babayara Sports Stadium, they can go and ask the Sudanese what happened to them. <laughs> so they, they, you see, they have this kind of hope. There's this kind of um, feeling that any time a team comes to Babayara Sports Stadium to play against the Black Star, there's no way that that team can go with even a point. Mm -hmm. So they are very sure that Zambia can go ahead to brag, but when they come to Babaya Sports Stadium, that place has always been a Waterloo for any visiting team. So you believe Ghana will sail through to the World Cup, definitely? No doubt about that. All right.